In order to achieve one's goals, one has to have the right tools. If you were a carpenter with the goal of building a house, your tools would be lumber, a saw, a hammer, and some nails. If you were an accountant with the goal of balancing the books, your tools might be a spreadsheet and a calculator. If you were Hansel and Gretel with the goal of escaping the clutches of a cannibalistic witch, your tools would be a large oven, a roasting fire, and a sizable amount of deceptive naivete. My goal is to improve my physical fitness, and so we will be taking a look at the tools I will be using to achieve that goal today on A Body in Progress. In the previous episode, I laid out my goals, the things I want to achieve, and so now in this episode, I want to take a look at how I plan to get there. What are the tools and equipment I have for reaching those goals? This will be something of a hybrid episode. I'm going to talk about the tools at my disposal, and along the way, I'm going to include what I think are the pros and cons uh, and any recommendations I have for any newcomers seeking similar information themselves. The story of my mental growth as someone interested in better health and fitness would begin years ago with what I now know to be the false notion that the greatest tool at my disposal would be the physical equipment at the gym. I would now say several years later, and after eight or nine years of experience, good and bad, my greatest tool will actually be the knowledge of what to do. And so on that subject, I want to talk about the three sources of knowledge I have at my disposal, the three broad categories really that anyone has, uh, print media, online media, and real live people. And let's get started right now with the big one in print media. This is a book that has been around for decades now, and anybody really that I've ever known who was a serious lifter has recommended that I read it, and I finally did get the chance. It is Arnold Schwarzenegger's Modern Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. Um, this is the second edition now that Arnold has put out, and this was actually given to me by uh, my friend in Wales, Harry, uh, a couple years ago. Very generous of him to uh, contribute to my growth and improvement with that. Um, let me hold it up here a little bit again. It actually promises, where is it? Uh, whether you are a beginner looking for guidance or a top competitor searching for the winning edge, the new encyclopedia of modern bodybuilding is here to help you make your body more energetic, powerful, and muscular. You have the determination, you have the will, and now you have the secrets, the techniques, and all the information you need to reach your ultimate potential. So this really is a good book, even if you're not looking to be the biggest, brawniest, on-stage muscle competitor out there, this is a great compendium for how to gain strength, how to eat right for, for what you want to achieve. It's not just for the big guys, it's for the average guy. And so uh, I definitely intend to uh, include this, or even make this a foundation in my learning as I go forward. On the plus side, the encyclopedia is incredibly comprehensive with a lot of illustrations. I'm very much a visual learner, so just reading something in text in a book uh, may have a certain degree of helpfulness, but um, the more somebody can actually demonstrate for me what I need to know, especially on a subject like this where it does involve actual activity, um, the more pictures and, and demonstrations, the better. And Arnold Schwarzenegger has plenty of it in this book. He has basic workout plans. He has more advanced workout plans. He has diet and nutrition information. So it is very comprehensive in itself. I'd say it's definitely well worth the money that it takes to get it. And let's see, the money that it took at the time was 30 bucks. I assume it's probably still a very similar price. The downside is that a book of that size cannot keep up with modern research easily. Uh, it was a couple of decades before Schwarzenegger actually wrote the second edition to incorporate new things he had learned, uh, things that science had learned. Uh, one example that comes to mind is in his first edition, he recommended sit-ups. By the time he wrote the second one, the medical and physiology community kind of all agreed that sit-ups were not really good for the, uh, the lower area of the spine, and crunches were now the in thing. So 
Um, he's made some of those updates, but again, that took years to come out with that new information, which is why I do still recommend the uh, second source of information that I will be using, magazines. With so much information available for free online, does anyone still read magazines anymore? I would say yes, but obviously not as many as used to. Um, this is one of my favorites uh, from long ago, Exercise for Men Only. It is now out of print. Um, most of the magazines I used to find on the magazine rack are now long gone. Sitting on my bookshelf are about two or three dozen such magazines going all the way back to 2004 at least. I never really subscribed, but I would pick one up every now and then when I found something that I thought would be useful and helpful well, when I was feeling uh, particularly motivated to take steps forward. Um, and I've never gotten rid of them, so they are uh, still a, a good source of information. They, uh, the typical magazine does have good workouts in it. They're, they're useful, they're helpful. I have used some of them. They come with uh, helpful informational articles on various subjects. Um, so, you know, if you want to pick one up, it's, it's not really going to do any harm. On the plus side, and again, compared to Arnold's Encyclopedia, magazines can update you on new information and better information much more often. On the downside, most of any given magazine is advertising. You are actually paying quite a lot of money to be sold further products. You really have to wade in there to find the good articles uh, on the information that you need. So it's a toss-up. Um, I personally will occasionally still get a magazine because I like physical media. I like having a book that I can lay out in front of me and and study and take notes and and, and I'm, I will always be a, uh, a paper and ink kind of person. But it's not just about the workouts. Better nutrition is key to crafting that better body. So I have a couple of cookbooks. This is The Shredded Chef sent to me by my friend Bob. Uh, cookbooks specifically designed for weightlifters and bodybuilders have one plus in them that the average cookbook for the average housewife uh, like Julia Child does not have, and that is uh, a list of the calories um, and then broken down into proteins, carbohydrates, and fats so that you can decide what are you trying to do? Are you trying to lose weight? Then you find a recipe in here that will help you in that. Are you trying to build muscle? Then you find a recipe that fits that. And so um, uh, there are several cookbooks out there. I have two. I think I might have a third as an ebook, um, And I will be using those and uh, evaluating them and the recipes in them as I go, seeing which ones I like and trying out different ones to see, uh, to, 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 to really focus more in 2019 on, uh, on nutrition. Let's take a look now at my online sources of information. And just as the print world had its uh, keystone source there, the uh, Encyclopedia by Arnold Schwarzenegger, there is one major website that almost everybody into weightlifting knows about, bodybuilding.com. Bodybuilding.com is a massive database of information for just about any guy out there trying to get in better shape, regardless of what his specific goals are. Of course, the title of the website would indicate that its focus is bodybuilding, but uh, so many people use it for just average weightlifting, average physical improvement. It has a lot of articles that you can browse on just about every type of workout, uh, just about every type of eating plan. There are actual workout plans uh, submitted by industry professionals. Um, they have switched over to a model where some of that information has entered a pay section where you have to subscribe, but there is still a great deal of it that is free, including, I think, um, what has been my favorite section or the most helpful section for me, and that is their encyclopedia of specific exercises. You can go to a part of their website where you can pick which body part you want to work out, and they will list the exercises known to man uh, that anybody has, has published and made official. And so you can find very specific information and maybe you don't know what to do. Maybe you go to the gym and go, well, I, I've done the two back exercises I know. Go home, go to bodybuilding.com and look up some more back exercises. So it, it is a great source of information in that way. One of the cautions I would throw in is that sometimes the articles are not written by industry professionals. They're written by people who use the site and have put together workout plans. And someone at bodybuilding.com, some of their editors, have, uh, have reached out to that person saying, we like what you've achieved, do you want to share what you know? And so every once in a while I will come across an article that um, sounds either very specific to that person or amateur, 
um, and quite possibly uh, a little bit hazardous to the newcomer who doesn't quite know what he's doing at the gym. So just, you know, if you browse those articles, you, you browse with, uh, uh, you know, just a, a hint of caution there. But the internet is full of fitness forums for you to find and join, places that have bulletin boards where you can ask questions. There are places all over for you to, to socialize, gather information, learn from others, and encourage others as well. And I think my favorite in that category is My Bodybuilding Network. I discovered this in 2014, and I joined, I gave it a little trial, and uh, I found myself quickly surrounded by at least a dozen people who were regular interactors. They were constantly posting, and then they were constantly commenting on other posts. They are, to this day, a very active group of about six, with some more that come and go based on whether they're out of town or not. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we encourage each other, and I mean, if, if I post something, they will all within two or three days find it and respond, and uh, so they've been very encouraging. It's, it's, it's the best place I've found now, these days, for an online circle of friends uh, around the subject of fitness. Before we leave the subject of online sources, I do need to caution any newcomers, any new lifters who are looking for information, to watch out for websites like this. Hello, welcome to this website. You got here by clicking a link, probably an ad on Facebook or some other such place, that promised you great health benefits. Now the very first thing you're going to do is sit through a video. It's not a video with a live person, it's usually a video with text or maybe clever little graphics bouncing around the screen. Here are some important things to note about this video. I'm going to promise at the very beginning that it's only going to last a few minutes. But you will discover as you check your watch that after 15 minutes I'm still talking, maybe even after 20. This really stretches the definition of a few minutes. I'm also going to spend those first 15 minutes simply bringing up anecdotes about a problem. Are you tired? Are you sluggish? Have you got a beer gut? Let me tell you about a friend of mine who tried an amazing product which shall remain nameless for the next 14 and a half minutes. Also note that this is not just a link to a YouTube video. This is an embedded video loaded by the website, and it's designed so that you cannot fast forward to the end to simply find out what the product is. I want you to sit through my spiel so that you're brainwashed into swallowing everything I have to say. We will finally reach a point where I mention the name of the product and then the video ends and off we'll go to a web page that continues to describe what I've just talked about. You can scroll for ages before reaching the bottom where it says you'll only pay an astronomical amount of money for this product. So here's my advice to you. If you come across one of these websites that starts with one of these videos, Close that internet browser immediately. You don't have to be afraid of spam or malware or a virus that will infect your computer. You will simply be wasting your time. So again, if you encounter a website that begins with a video that promises you the solution to all of your health and fitness problems, and it's a video you can't stop, stop. Just turn it off because it will be a waste of your time. I'm not saying the product is a fraud but I am saying it's overpriced and it will not be the cure-all that you want. Finally, my favorite source of information is real live people. I am very much a people person. I would rather uh, go to the gym with a human being and work alongside him and have him say, uh, hey, you're doing pretty well there. Here's how you can improve your bench press or, okay, what about doing this for your workout? What about arranging these exercises this way uh, and, and trying out this and that and showing me new things? Um, I would so much rather do that. And uh, there are two broad categories there, personal trainers and real live friends. For personal trainers, I would say I've never really had one. I had Mark Prickett and uh, Brannigan Dixon and Bill Haynes, as I have mentioned in episode one. Um, they all volunteered their time to, to help me move forward. So I have had that experience, but I've never paid for one. Um, I, I have gathered some cautions myself. Um, if you dis do decide to go with a personal trainer, um, experience quickly, learn quickly because you're spending money from day one. Is this personal trainer interested in you and your progress? Um, is he leading you through exercises safely? Um, you know, is he really paying attention 
to what's going on there. Um, watch out for the personal trainer who spends more time talking about him and, and his success than helping you. Um, he gets on his cell phone during the half hour that you're there. He's texting while you're doing a set. Um, you know, he's, he's talking to other people. Brannigan at uh, Redmond Athletic Club was very good about focusing on me for that half hour. And uh, I've noticed that anytime I've tried to talk to him in the past when he was training others, um, he would very quickly say hi and move on. He would acknowledge me, but he would not waste time. Um, you want that kind of thing. Um, watch out for the trainer who has you doing something incredibly stupid. And if you're new, you may not know what incredibly stupid is. But let me tell you this, if it involves heavy weights that might fall on you, um, it's probably stupid. And then finally, there's friends, which is actually my favorite category. I think of all the ways I could learn how to do something new, I would prefer going to the gym with a friend who has that knowledge and have him say, here, try this, here, do this, um, here, throw this into your workout. Here's what I do, and it works for me. Why don't you try it? Um, I've had the opportunity over the past eight or nine years to every now and then work out with a friend, and those are always my favorite times. Those are always my favorite sources of information. Some of my friends are online only. I have yet to meet them. I hope to meet at least some of them someday because they're very encouraging online, so I can only imagine that they would be very motivational in person as well. So I have Arnold's Encyclopedia, I have several magazines, several books, uh, some cookbooks, I have the entire internet at my disposal, as well as uh, a good dozen people uh, in my life who I feel I could call on with questions at any time on how to improve my workouts or my nutrition and things like that. So I feel like I'm pretty well armed, not necessarily with the knowledge now, although I have a, a, a reasonable foundation going after eight years, I'm armed with sources of information to learn from as I head into this year and further into the future. Real quickly before this episode becomes extremely boring and or I run out of time, I do want to talk about the physical equipment. I do have a gym membership. I actually have two gym memberships. Um, that's very helpful. Um, the Redmond Athletic Club comes armed with uh, machines and weights of all kinds. And I think uh, if you can afford it and you really want to get in good shape, you should get a gym membership. And then one other little piece of equipment at my disposal is my home set of dumbbells. I bought these back in 1993, I believe, actually before moving from Connecticut. And I bought them from my friend Rob, who worked at a sports equipment store. He recommended them. They are still with me. I was tempted at one point when we were moving to just go ahead and put them in a garage sale, but I'm so glad I did not. Nowadays, everything is uh, rubberized or some kind of carefully crafted plastic-based product. These are the old school. These are weeder dumbbells, and I have uh, four plates of 10 pounds and four plates of five pounds. So I can do um, exercises at home. Uh, if it's a two-handed exercise, I can do 30 pounds in each hand uh, on, on each set of dumbbells. Uh, if it's something I can do one-handed, I can go up to 60 pounds on that dumbbell. Um, it's you know, it's not going to get me to the Mr. Olympia in Las Vegas. Um, in fact, I'm not going to get there without steroids these days. But um, it's better than missing a workout on a busy day when I just do not have the hour or hour and a half to drive to the gym, get changed, do the workout, do all that stuff. I can grab these at home and I can get a little muscle stimulation going on. I'm sure if I really thought about it, I could come up with more tools to discuss, more sources of knowledge, uh, more physical equipment for me to use. But I think uh, what I've mentioned here lays a pretty good foundation for carrying me into 2019 and then further into the future and for however long this video series lasts. 